This brief tutorial will introduce you to the basics of running a regression. You may find the material for this tutorial on page 258 on the Data Models and Decisions textbook, where this problem is also discussed. To provide this brief introduction on how to run an a regression in Excel, we will revisit the example we discussed in class, where we have 15 different cities, the sales data, the expense on advertising, on promotion, on competitor sales, and for the sake of the argument, the average annual snowfall in the sister cities. First, usually when I start a regression, before I run the regression, I actually do run a correlation analysis. So let me show you how I run a correlation analysis. First, go to data, go on the data tab, and go to data analysis, something we will be doing quite frequently. Click on data analysis, and let's find correlation. Hit OK. The input range for our correlation is simply our data. So it's sales all the way to average snow, all our independent variables from sales all to average annual snowfall. Labels in first rows, yes, we do have labels. And let's put this in a new worksheet, which we call correlation matrix. OK. Hit OK. And there you go. So let's clean this up a little bit. That we actually can see what the headings are. And I don't like the uh, the numbers to be uh, that precise, so let's go back to home and look for less precision in the data. Let's say two two digital points. So let's see what we have. Sales is the dependent variable. And we have a high correlation between advertising and sales, which is a good sign. High correlation between promotions and sales. Fairly high correlation, negative correlation between competitor sales and our sales. The average annual snowfall, as expected, does not have a particularly high correlation. So we would expect that the first three variables may have some impact, but the fourth probably not too much. Now let's look inside the... Uh, matrix between the dependent variables. Correlations between the dependent variables are all fairly low. There's some correlation between competitor sales and promotions. But by and large, I would think we are fairly safe um, in terms of multicollinearity. We may want to watch competitor sales and promotions, but uh, hopefully we will not run into any problems. So let's go back to our data, down here to sheet 1, where we have our data. And let's go back again to data, to the data tab, to data analysis. And now we do not take the correlation, but we go to regression, hit OK. Our input Y range is our dependent variable, sales. So let's select sales. Our input X range are our dependent variables. Let's select all these. Let's make sure we have labels. And let's say the new worksheet apply for the output is regression results 1. Perhaps we have more regressions than 1. For now, let's just um, leave it at this and hit OK. A new worksheet opens up called Regression Results. And here is our, our, our data again. I don't like the uh, level of accuracy. So I go back to home and uh, reduce. This looks a lot nicer, much easier to read. Our p-values are all quite good, the uh, except for 
the average annual snowfall, which again we did not expect to be uh, particularly telling. Uh, however, we have uh, still the p-value. We have an almost an 89% confidence that average snowfall does matter. However, I would recommend taking it clearly out of the model. You have an R-square currently of 85%. That's a good model. Our coefficients are pretty good. The science we expect them to be. Our sales increase with advertising. Our sales increase with promotions. They decrease with the competitor sales. And uh, so that looks good. So let's run one more regression, but take average annual snowfall out. Let's go back to our data on sheet one. Let's do the same thing again. Data, data analysis, regression, hit OK. And now it's a bit easier. We simply change the F to an E here because this is the range we're interested in now. The range from C1 to E16. Now let's call a new ply regression results two. Hit OK. And here we have our new regression results. Again, I like to clean this up first. Home. And let's go down to perhaps two digits of accuracy. This is good enough for my purposes. And now we have a still, our R square is still at uh, almost 82%, so highly predictive model. All the coefficients seem right. We have a parsimonious model that's tight and concise. To learn more details about running regressions, please stay tuned for further tutorials.